But what door to choose? There are obviously the industry standard professional bits of software, but these are pretty expensive. So let's look at some equally great free pieces of software. Welcome to the Seb Skelly School of Sound and Stuff. First up is something you don't even have to download any software for. It's completely in your browser, as long as that browser is Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So you might have to download one of those if you don't use those. But it's called BandLab, bandlab.com, and it's actually quite powerful for something in your browser. If you head to bandlab.com, you can create an account for free. I'm just gonna log in here because I've already got an account because I've used it with a few mates and it's actually been pretty cool. It's got these collaborative features, which means you can work on projects at the same time simultaneously over the internet and record stuff in like that. It's also got a nice social aspect where you can share songs with other creators and people can follow you and stuff like that if you're into that. So once you've logged in, this is the sort of thing that you'll see. And what we're gonna do is just click create. We're just gonna jump right in. Now all these doors do have different ways of working and do look quite different, but there are similar features across the board. We're gonna go ahead and create a new track here, a new voice slash microphone track, uh, because that's what we're gonna be recording. We're just recording using the inbuilt microphone. And this is the window here now. Some of these features will become familiar to you throughout this video and also if you try out other doors further down the line. We've got this area here where your audio tracks will go. This is the sort of track area. This tells you what is on this audio track and you can rename these. So I'm gonna call this one Trumpet. You can do things like turn the volume up and down and pan it left and right in your headphones or speakers. And here's your mute button and your solo button, which is like the opposite of mute. It mutes everything else apart from that track. You've also got your bar numbers here along the top. And at the very top of the window is your sort of transport bar with things like play, uh, go to the start, record the big red button, but we'll get onto that in a second. And then here you've got your tempo, beats per minute and time signature. And most importantly, if you're recording multi-track stuff just on your own and you need to play along to yourself, the metronome. You can enable that by clicking on it. And there are also some extra settings like how many bars you get in before it starts recording. I'm gonna call this Band Lab Demo. And I'm gonna show you how to record some stuff into it. Although quickly before we do that, I'm just gonna show you how to do a very important step and that is setting the level of your microphone or the gain as it's known. You can find these settings in Mac OS by going to the sound tab of the system preferences app, which you can also access by clicking on the volume icon at the top of your screen and clicking on sound preferences. Or if you prefer shortcuts, you can hit Alt and volume keys to open the sound preferences window. Then you're gonna to navigate to the input tab and you can see here that it's picking up my talking quite nicely. It's in a good level. You don't wanna go in these uh, top three pill shaped things here. That's gonna be where it starts distorting. But if I play my trumpet, that's gonna be way too loud. Or if you're playing your instrument, it's gonna be way too loud. So we're gonna turn this down from 100%. Usually I find for brass instruments, it's uh, around as little as you can make it go, maybe a couple pixels up from zero. Now, if I play my trumpet, you should see that the input level doesn't go above those top two or three pill shaped things and the recording shouldn't be too distorted. And if you're on Windows, you can find these settings by right clicking on the volume icon in the bottom right hand corner, clicking on open sound settings and then scrolling down to input device properties and then here's your volume slider. If you click start test, it will show you the level of the volume coming in. So let's turn this down to maybe into the single digits somewhere. And then you'll just have to do the same thing, check with your instrument that it doesn't go above maybe 85% and then your recording should be nice and clean. So down here is where you set your input. And if you've uh, been paying close attention, you'll have seen this little thing wiggling about while I speak because it's picking up my voice with the internal microphone. We've set the gain in the system preferences or our sound settings if you're on Windows. And we can select our different inputs here uh, for now, just default internal microphone will do. This little monitoring button will let us hear what's being recorded as it's being recorded. Although I'm gonna leave that off for now because probably don't really need it. So I've got my headphones and let's record something. Headphones are very important so that the click doesn't get recorded as well, but we can hear it. And to start recording, we're gonna put the playhead where we want to start recording from. This is the playhead here. And we're gonna click the big red button or the shortcut for this across most doors is R, unless you're on Pro Tools and then it's uh, the three on the number pad for reasons related to tape decks, maybe. Uh, don't quote me on that, you'll have to bing it. Let's record some stuff in. Oh dear, I uh, didn't play my B flat major scale very well. B flat major, this trumpet is in E flat, so 
concert D flat major scale it didn't play that very well so we're going to do another take and how do we do this well we're going to need to add another track here um, another voice slash microphone track and we're going to call this one trumpet take two we're going to mute the first take because i don't really want to hear my mistake while i'm playing along to it and making sure the playhead is back at the start which it does automatically once you stop recording i'm then going to hit record again and try and play that scale better much better indeed so i'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, just so i can see the notes a bit better and you'll notice that uh, you've got a load of blobs sort of on the screen and these blobs are the sound the sort of the bigger the blob the louder the note and you can see the gaps in between the notes where it dips slightly so i think it was the last two notes that i played wrong on the first take let's just solo that take to hear it on its own once you've got more than two takes this will be a lot easier than muting every other take so what we're going to do is chop these last two notes and add them into the first take. So if we go to edit and slice at playhead uh, after we've set our playhead to the right place, that will then chop that region in half and then we can drag it up and it should snap to the playhead or where it started from. And now if we play that first take back, That sounds much nicer. Then once you've recorded everything in, you're going to want to mix everything, get everything to the right volume by adjusting these volume sliders so nothing's too loud and nothing's too quiet. Although I will be doing a full uh, video on how I mix my brass quintets at a later date. So stay tuned for that, subscribe and all that stuff. And then finally to export this and have it as a audio file that you can actually use in a video or send to friends, you're gonna go to file, download, mix down as, and that will save the song and you'll be able to download it. You'll then get a few options for different file types. Uh, you've got MP3s, which we're all familiar with, that are slightly reduced quality, but they're much smaller files, or WAV will be the uh, actual thing. There's no compression, but larger file size. It's all there for you. Uh, just click that, download it, and there's your download coming straight to your computer and ready to share. Now, if you're on Windows and you're looking for something a bit more fully featured and a bit more fleshed out and more of a standalone app than BandLab, then look no further than Cakewalk by BandLab, actually. From what I've experienced in my small time looking at it, it seems pretty fully featured and quite fleshed out. It looks quite different to BandLab, so I'm gonna just quickly show you how this all works. But this is what it looks like. This is your first uh, open screen once you've installed it and registered it and everything. It's completely free, but you do have to register it. I'm gonna go and create an empty project here. There we are, project successfully opened. One step closer to greatness. Now that is motivation if I've ever heard it. Now, obviously it looks very different to BandLab. It looks a bit more old school maybe, um, and slightly, slightly different layout, but the principles are the same. This window here is where your audio tracks will appear. This is where your track headers will appear. Um, this over here is your sort of effects rack thing, and this is where you can choose your effects. And then to bring up a little mixer section, there's a console down here, but we'll get onto that in a second. Then we've got our transport stuff up here and some different tools, play, pause, uh, back to the start, rewind, force forward, whatever you want to call it. The big red button, again, the shortcut is R. Thank you, Cakewalk. And then here is your metronome. So this thing here is the click track. This is the metronome when you're recording. And then this here is your metronome settings where you can set other things like counting. Uh, so let's set that to one and apply. You'll see that actually Cakewalk hasn't created any tracks automatically for us. So we're gonna go to this little plus button here, add a track, an audio track, stereo microphone, just our inbuilt microphone is fine. And here we go. Now, when we're recording in Cakewalk, there's just one difference to how we do it. We're gonna have to record arm this track by clicking this little record arm there. I'm gonna call this trumpet. And you can see that once we've record arm this track, you can see the level is coming in when I talk. Now I'm gonna grab my headphones. Again, very important, grab my trumpet and I'm just gonna go straight in and record a take. So our playhead is at the start here and we're gonna hit the big red button or the shortcut R once again. And again, kind of messed up the end. I really need to practice my uh, B flat major scale fingerings. So I'm gonna record another take in. Did you see what I did there differently? I didn't have to create a new track. I just recorded straight over, which in BandLab would have erased the previous take. But in Cakewalk, 
we have a nice feature called track lanes, which is something that is in a lot of pro software, which is why I think this is great. If we drag this down to make this track bigger, we'll open up a few more options. I'm also going to drag this this way so that we get a bit more view on the actual track itself. If we click this little button here called take lanes, we'll then see that both our takes have been saved and they're both sort of laid on top of each other like this. So let's zoom in a little bit and we're going to go to the end, which is where I play the last note wrong. So let's take the whole of take one and the last note of take two, because maybe I prefer take one the way I played the start of that. In order to switch between takes, we're going to need to hover over it so we get this little icon here. And if we click on take one, it will select that as our main take. And you'll see it's turned blue and this one's greyed out now. Now to get this last note to play as well, we're going to drag along with the same icon, just like so. And there you'll see it's selected that take uh, for that note and the rest of it is still the first take. Now you can get a bit more fine tuned than this if we zoom in again a little bit on this little comp here, this little edit, and turn off snapping mode. Then we can adjust where the edit point is by finding this little icon by hovering over this area of the track and just scooching it along and we can see that that doesn't look like we've chopped it in the middle of a note, which would look something like this, where you can see there's suddenly a massive jump up, which is not what we want. So we're going to put it probably about there. That would probably be good. And now if we play that back, it should sound much nicer. Sorted. Now another thing that this program has that BandLab doesn't have is the console down here. If it's not down there, you can get it in Views and Console View, or Alt 2 is your shortcut. But if we open up that, if you've got more than one track, you'll have uh, all these faders and you can change the volume of these individually and change the panning of them here, which is quite a handy way of organising the volume of everything. To get rid of this window, don't click that X because then this will disappear and you'll have to go back up to views again. You're going to go down to here and click these two arrows here to collapse that window away. And then once we're happy with what we've got recorded and the volumes of everything, we're going to go to file and export and audio. And here we've got a few different options. We're just going to leave it on wave and we're going to call it cake walk demo and export. And there it is should be somewhere wherever we exported it to. And that is Cakewalk. I uh, highly recommend this. It seems pretty fully featured, even if it does look a little bit old school, but maybe you're into that. And finally, if you're a Mac user and you aren't using GarageBand yet, I'm not sure where you've been for the last 15 or so years, but it's a great free app that comes with every Mac computer and is available on iPad and iOS as well. I think it was probably my first door. I used to go to a friend's house and make little loop based compositions in GarageBand back in probably 2006 or something. And it's also quite an easy transition up to Logic Pro, which is the app that I use to make my music. It's one of the cheaper, professional doors out there and it's a really smooth transition from GarageBand because it's based on the same system. When you first open it up this is what it looks like. It looks something similar to this. I haven't updated to Big Sur yet but it will look a bit like this. Uh, we're going to go and create a new empty project and this is looking quite similar to BandLab. We can select different types of track. Uh, we're going to go for an audio track here just using a microphone and you can see here that the instrument is connected with built-in microphone which is what we're going to be using to record. And here is our window again very similar looking to band lab we've got our tracks area here the track headers here uh, these are some settings down here that we can play around with later uh, here's our recording level which we set earlier in system preferences that's right down at the bottom so that our trumpet doesn't distort and over here we've got some different effects that we can apply to the music but for now we're just going to worry about recording stuff in of course we've also got the transport bar at the top stop play record uh, bpm time signature and our click here, the one, two, three, four is our counting. If you control click or right click, if you have that enabled, you can then uh, change the length of the counting. And as with the other doors that I've shown you, the shortcut for starting to record is the letter R. Editing in GarageBand will be identical to BandLab. So if you skip through that bit of the video, go back and just have a little peek at that. The only difference is how you split the regions. You have to go to edit and split regions at playhead, or there's a shortcut, which is command T. To export, we're going to go to share up here on the top and click export song to disc. You can do some other options, but I think export song to disc gives you the most flexibility. So we're going to export song to disc and then you get some options of different file types and then we export that. And there it is, it's done. It's going to export everything uh, up until the end of the last region as they're known, these little blue blobs. And that's GarageBand.
Thanks for watching. Obviously, these doors have a bit of a steep learning curve, but they're well worth the effort. If you get into them, you can create some wonderful music using these pieces of software. I've just changed my shirt to uh, just show you that I have some merch which I made, which I thought was quite uh, subtle. It's not obviously from some rando on the internet. So if you want to support the channel and buy some merch and you're not interested in Patreon, grab yourself a t-shirt. It's pretty comfy, nice long sleeve boy. There's also short sleeves and hoodies and it directly supports me minus the production costs. So uh, check it out. I think there's a link downstairs or you know, on my channel somewhere. Otherwise, uh, subscribe if you haven't seen the video that I did before where I did three mistakes that you might be making, three little tips for better recordings. Check that one out. This was kind of meant to be a part of that one, but it made the video way too long. So I split it up into two. And also keep an eye out for an upcoming video where I'll talk about how I mix my brass quintets to give you an insight into how to make your recordings uh, sound that much better once you've recorded them in these free doors, which I've just shown you. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Goodbye.